I'm going to show you how to retrofit your Z-axis. This is actually a mill that we were using in our shop, um, and it's got our, our 3 8 20 uh, regular screw on it. It's also a 15-inch bed. So first and foremost, we're just going to start stripping it down here. Okay, this one's got a headstock with a riser block. We're just going to take that whole assembly off of here. And we'll get that out of our way. All right. So now what we're going to have to we'll have to remove the saddle and the entire lead screw assembly. So the easiest way to do this is to take off the, the stepper motor and then just remove the two eight three two screws from here and pull the entire assembly out. So we've got we have our access hole right here on the side. Put our 332nd screw into the coupling, and I can break that guy loose. All right, because we're going to be reusing the stepper motor, we'll take that off entirely first. And we'd already put a high torque 2 amp stepper motor on this machine, so we're just going to reuse that on this machine. If you buy a high torque, the inter they're interchangeable with the regular st stepper motor that we sell. Uh, the frame is a NEMA 23. That's just plug and play. The only difference is when we go to the high torque stepper motor, you have to change your coupling to the high torque coupling. And our stepper motor is off. We'll set that off to the side. And along with the screws to mount it back on. I'm going to put this down on its side for right now. Make it easy to work on. Okay, and all I'm going to do is remove the 832 screws from inside. We have two of them here. And then the entire assembly comes right off of there. And now all we're left with is our column base and column bed. This is the coupling that comes with your, your original CNC and it's got the three saw cuts in it. This is the coupling that we use with the ball screw and the high torque. It has no saw cuts in it. Uh, it's much stronger than this. The torque on our high torque stepper motor is actually great enough to break one of these. It's not going to break one of these. So this is what you're going to receive for your Z-axis retrofit. Uh, we've already assembled the ball screw and nut into it. We've set the preload. We've got the new coupling in here. This guy, everything is factory set and it's ready to just transfer over to your machine. That way we, we know exactly what we what, what you got in your package. Everything is correct in the spec and the assembly is proper. When you get it, it'll be mounted to a board that uses these three, these three holes to mount it so that it doesn't get damaged in transit. You take those three screws out and this is what you've got right here. Okay, And you'll also have a bag of the other screws that you need for your assembly along with two 332nd Allen wrenches. The first thing you want to do, these screws right here are just snug. Okay, you want to loosen them up. Then once they're loose, you've got three 1032 by 5 8 socket head cap screws and a number 10 washer. You want to get those started into the side holes. If you have trouble getting the thread in, turn it backwards until you feel it click. And that's the beginning of your thread and then thread it in. Don't cross cross thread your holes here. What you want to do next is finger tighten these three down. Okay. Then you want to tighten these three down finger tight. By tightening these down you're sandwiching this whole assembly together so we know that this part of it is assembled properly. There's a little more play on this side here. So once this is done then we come in and we tighten 
these three guys down. Then we come back and we tighten these two the rest of the way. So we're all locked in nice and solid. Okay, so what you have right now is a solid box extrusion that's going to go onto your, onto your Z-axis. All right. You'll notice that it's got a zip tie right here that's holding the protective bag on, a pair of wire cutters, and you can just cut the zip tie. Pull the bag off. The next thing you will notice is that there's a zip tie on the ball screw. This stays on here until the entire assembly is complete. If you take this off, what will happen is as we're putting this together, the saddle can actually spin right off of the lead screw, all right? Or right, the lead screw can spin right off of, off of the ball nut. If it comes off of the ball nut, then this entire lead screw is it's scrap. You just trashed your lead screw. Uh, and the balls are extremely small. You, you, you'll never even notice it when they fall out. So anyhow, this guy stays on there to make sure that your ball nut and ball screw assembly does not come undone until the entire assembly process is finished. Next thing we want to do, we will loosen the gib lock and pull the gib out. Now what we'll do next is mount the saddle. You've got your pivot pin right here. Make sure that's down all the way. You want to have, you're going to start it on this side, which is the 55 and a half degree side of your saddle. Get it into the area right there. Then you put your 5 ace spud down inside the 5 ace hole, and that guy's assembled right there. Okay, the next part of this, you're going to put your, well, actually, you will put the two 832 screws in there, just finger tight. Just start them. Don't lock them all the way down yet. Just get them started. Once they're started, then you can get them finger tight in there. And that's just to hold this in place for right now. So those are finger tight. That is all. Alright. Now what we want to do is put your gib back in. It's got a, a, a wide side and a narrow side. The wide side goes up inside the saddle. The narrow side goes towards the back right here. And what you want to do is hold it, in, hold it down as you push it up in there. Align your, your gib lock with the gib lock hole and you want to push it up until it's snug. And then what we can do for right now is just finger tighten the set screw for the gib lock so it doesn't move in and out. And that guy's good. We got nice free motion right there. If when your z-axis is moving down, it locks up, and when it's moving up, it gets loose. It means that your gib is not locked in place, and as the saddle comes down, the fat end of the gib is being forced into the saddle, which locks it up. So if you have that happen after your assembly is done, look at your gib and make sure that you've actually got it adjusted properly and that the gib uh, lock is actually locked in place, that the gib's not moving. Now we're going to put the stepper motor back on. You've got the cable, the five pin DIN cable coming out of the stepper motor. You want to make sure that it's to the back of the stepper motor. You can put it to the side if you want. You definitely don't want it to the front. In the back is where it's out of the way. All we have to do is turn the hand wheel to align the flat with the set screw and the coupling. And put this guy down in place. So what I want to do now is I want to slowly tighten the set screw onto the shaft. Once it gets, once I feel contact, then what I'm going to do is turn the hand wheel slightly to make sure that I'm perpendicular to the flat. It's not off at a slight angle at all. So I'm going to go perpendicular to the flat. Then I'm going to back it off a hair. What I want to do before I tighten this all the way is I want to sandwich 
the stepper motor and the motor mount together first. So we have our 832 screws. If you're doing a retrofit, your machine had three 832 screws in it, and we use the one, the one hole to actually zip tie the cable. This cable on this stepper motor is hardwired from the factory. It's not a plug-in. So on these, we don't zip tie them to the fourth hole. We just leave it as it is. Uh, if you want to zip tie it, you can. Um, we recommend you just put in your four screws. If you only have three, they'll work. Uh, we'll send you a fourth one with your retrofit kit, but you don't need to zip tie this cable. So you might as well get extra holding power. Again, you just want to put these guys in and get them all started first. You don't want to sock them down. And that way, if there's any slight misalignment between the holes, all the screws will get started first. Once they're all started, then we'll snug them down, go crisscross to snug them down. And once they're all down finger tight, then torque them down good. Oh, that guy's in there. All right, right now, everything's sandwiched right here. If you tighten the set screw on the shaft first and then you sandwich this, you're gonna have a load going into the stepper motor from the shaft. If you tighten these first and then you come back and you tighten the set screw into the shaft on the stepper motor, you don't have any actual load on the stepper motor. So again, it's loose, you wiggle this, the handle a little bit as you're tightening it down to make sure it's perpendicular to the flat, and then tighten it down good and tight. I use my 3 8 wrench as a cheater bar, and that guy's in there nice and tight. Your screw may have a little bit of wobble to it like this. This is not excessive wobble, and it won't be a factor in it how your machine works. So that's all good and fine right there. Next thing, because this was adjusted on a bed in our shop and your bed might be a thou difference here or there, what you want to do is align your ball nut with your stepper motor. So the way you do that is we break these guys loose right here. The two 1032s are holding the nut mount on. All right, and right now you can see there's a gap between this piece and the nut mount. It's floating free. And then what you want to do is also loosen the two 832 screws up here. And they actually, they were still loose. Okay, we didn't tighten those up all the way. Now what I want to do is I want to bring the Z-axis up nice and close and actually these should be a little bit tighter. We'll bring it up here. With it right there, now we will tighten these two screws down here, your two 832s. That guy's nice and tight. It's nice and tight. Okay, so this guy's locked in. Now what you want to do is put finger pressure against the saddle and start moving the saddle down. If I let go, actually, we'll make these a little bit looser right now. Okay, right now this piece is now floating free and will align itself with this uh, stepper motor mount. If I bring it up, you can see a gap. If I put pressure against it, you can see where the gap disappears. So right now I want to put pressure against it. I want to keep pressure against it and bring it down because now it's aligned. Once I get it down far enough to put an Allen wrench on it, I will then tighten one at a time. All right, that one's tight. And then I just tighten this one. That one's tight. There we go. Okay, all these are tight. All these are tight. This is tight. This is aligned. When you bring it all the way up, it should be moving freely. If there's any binding as you're moving it up, it means that this is not aligned correctly. 
So that's moving freely all the way up. As it goes down, it'll move even freer because you do this. Your lead screw can move a little bit. So it's only if it's if the if it's misaligned, you're only going to have a problem at the top end. You're not going to notice it down here. So that's why we do the alignment right up here, closest to the stepper motor mount. Right now, there's not enough gap here for your ball nut to come off of the screw. So at this point, everything is assembled, everything looks good. Now you come in and you just cut the wire tie off. So the last part of the operation is taking that wire tie off. That guarantees that there's no way the ball nut comes off of the ball lead screw. So you have your Z-axis all dialed in there. Okay. All right. Then you would take your headstock, put it back on, there you go. Now check it out again, it's moving nice and freely up and down. There's no wobble side to side, so your gib, your gib is tight enough, and you're good to go. For those of you that have a 2000 mil, this whole assembly process here is the same. Okay. The difference on a 2000 mil is we recommend that you go with this arm mount. Okay, We took the rotating piece off of it and we drilled and tapped the four holes directly into the arm mount so that your bed can attach directly to the arm mount. We don't foresee anybody ever using a CNC mill where they're going to have the head rotating side to side. That's just one more axis that can come loose. So with this arm mount, uh, basically you just put it in place of your original arm mount and screw your bed onto it. Just put your four screws in, and it goes directly into this arm mount. And then the arm mount, you replace this arm mount with the one that's in your 2000 mil. Indicate it in, and you're good to go. And the other one, this particular bed is our 15 inch bed that has the nickel, nickel and Teflon coating on it. All right. The, the Teflon adds lubricity to it and makes your Z-axis slide up and down a lot smoother. The nickel makes it so that it's rust proof. Okay, It's not going to rust on you if you live in a humid area or if you're one of those people where everything you touch gets rusty fingerprints all over it. This will not happen with this bed. So if you, if you buy our, our uh, ball lead screw mill, this is the bed that we put on our mill. Uh, when you uh, assemble it, make sure that your adjuster notch that's on the ball nut or on the, on the arm mount is facing up so that you can actually indicate this guy back in again once you've changed it out. And that's it.